We are going to have some magic this year, bro. The more I'm hearing from OTAs, the more confidence I'm starting to have in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Just look at his stats that he had from a couple of seasons ago, or better yet, check out this video, I give you the stats. Ryan Fitzpatrick has looked really good in OTAs. He's mentoring the young receivers. He's teaching them how to anticipate where he's going to throw the ball. You see, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not the type of quarterback that's going to wait for the receiver to get open. He's going to anticipate where he thinks the receiver should be, so he's going to throw to that spot. And so, of course, he's going to expect his wide receivers to be able to anticipate and be in position to catch that pass. And speaking of wide receivers, could we have a superstar in the making with Denami Brown? He's been tearing up OTAs like crazy. I mean, he's really starting to gel with Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's burnt our beloved Troy Apke. All right, well, maybe that was um, a bad example. Now, how do we go from just having Terry McLaurin and then whoever else happens to be healthy to now having a very scary, no pun intended, Terry, legitimate threat of a wide receiving group that could possibly be just frankly unfair for the rest of the NFL. Yes, I am drinking the Kool-Aid. And Kelvin Harmon, he is back and he's doing really well in OTAs. Dude, you have McLaurin, you have Brown, you have Samuel, you have Harmon, Humphreys, Cam Sims. Are you kidding me? And then we have the tight ends, which is also starting to become kind of a deep group in their own, although probably not quite as deep as the wide receiving group. But still, we have options outside of Logan Thomas. John Bates has been doing really well in OTAs. Uh, Samus Reyes, he continues to develop. And I just think, if our coaching staff can really coach up Reyes and develop him into the tight end that we all hope he can be, dude, it is over. I mean, just go ahead and give us the Lombardi Trophy now, bro. But getting back to Ryan Fitzpatrick, I really think he's going to surprise a lot of us this year. Now, while stats don't tell the whole story, if you look at his stats from the last couple of seasons, he has had much better stats than the elite quarterbacks in this league, and that is including the GOAT. I mean, this could actually be Ryan Fitzpatrick's best season as a professional. I mean, seriously, look what he has to work with. An outstanding defense that could possibly be the best defense in the league come the end of this season. A wide receiving group that honestly could possibly prove to be the the most special group we have had since, well, the posse. A running game that we all know is just going to continue to improve and get better. I mean, folks, I'm going full Kool-Aid on this one. We may not even have to worry about a quarterback in the next couple of seasons. I have that much faith in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, of course, I'm hearing also some very solid reports Coming out of OTAs about our own Taylor Haneke. The dude has bulked up. He's put on 15 pounds. And, well, I know a thing or two about putting on weight. Taylor has looked really good in OTAs. And from the sounds of it, it sounds like the coaching staff is really, they're more or less trying to coach him up in terms of instead of the do or die mentality, more of the live to play another day type of mentality. Because obviously, if he plays every game like he played in that playoff game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he may not have a very long career in the NFL. So we want to see if Taylor can kind of hone his skills a little bit to where he can play a balance between that do or die mentality as well as that live to play another day mentality. And I think if he does that, we could have Possibly somebody very special in Taylor Heineke. Could you imagine Ryan Fitzpatrick winning the Super Bowl and then heading out in the sunset with beard and all and and then Taylor Heineke picking up where Fitzpatrick left off? Okay, now I agree. <laughs> I should definitely lay off the Kool-Aid a bit. But here's the thing, right now there's there's so much optimism coming out of DC 
And quite frankly, it's a little bit ironic because usually there's not a lot of optimism coming out of Washington. By the way, training camp is coming back to Richmond, Virginia this year. And I have been wanting to get to training camp for the last several years, ever since they moved training camp to Richmond. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to go because my schedule just is not going to be able to dictate allowing me to go. However, I know that some of you other fellow Washington football team YouTubers do plan to go and I'm just laying this invitation out right now if you would like to kind of get together collab and and maybe send over your reports and and so we can keep all the fans in the know of what's going on that would be super awesome just just think about it it's getting closer folks it's getting so much closer meanwhile if you're digging this channel then please consider subscribing to the Washington football maniacs and when you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so you will never miss another video release. And if you really, really, really want to help this channel out, please consider going to our Patreon page and becoming a sponsor today. Sponsorships start as low as $5 a month. That's it, $5 a month to help support this channel and make it grow so I can provide you with all the information that you are looking for. Well, that's it for today, folks. Hell to the Washington football team. Let's go Maniac.